Hi, it's Ian here. Welcome to More Clients TV and day two of Lead Generation Q&A. Today I've got a couple of questions about content marketing, both of them super important. One is about blogging and guest posts. The other is on how to do content marketing on a tight budget. Both of them touch critical topics that can have a huge impact on lead generation. So we'll jump straight in in a second. Okay, so the first question comes from Gregor of BuildTracks.com, and Gregor asks, how relevant do you think guest blogging is nowadays? Is it worth doing, or should you spend more time on your own site? Well, the truth is that it depends on where you are with your site. You know, when you're noodling over tricky marketing problems, it's usually helpful to go back to first principles. So why might you want to do guest blogging or blog on your own site? Usually, it's because you want to build credibility and trust with potential clients. So ideally you want them on your own site or even better as email subscribers so you can communicate with them regularly over time because it takes multiple communications to build up the level of relationship you really need before someone's going to hire you to do your high value and hopefully expensive service for them. But if you're still in the early days with your site and you don't have much traffic, so let's say you get less than 100 or so unique visitors a day, then really no one's actually seeing all that great content you're producing. It's going to waste. So I usually advise a three-step process. Step one, make sure you've got five to ten great blog posts on your own site of your very best thinking, so that when you do get visitors, they think, well, this guy knows his stuff, I'll come back. And ideally, get your funnel going so that they sign up for emails from you. Now, step two is then to get your material visible where your audience actually is. So that means guest blogging or writing for portals or hubs where your ideal clients already visit. This gets your message out in front of your potential clients. You'll again then get some of them coming directly to your site, especially if you write an enticing byline. And it also creates links to your site from an authoritative site in your niche, and that'll improve your rankings in Google and drive traffic to your site over the long run. And these days where search engine optimization is all up in the air with the recent Google updates, guest blog posts are one of the absolute safest ways to get great links to your site in a natural, high-value manner. And visitors to your site from a guest blog post on someone else's site I tend to be about five to ten times more likely to become an email subscriber than other traffic. So then once you build up the traffic of your own site, you move to step three and switch back to posting primarily on your own site to build up that credibility and trust with the occasional guest post to widen your audience. Now obviously there's an art to guest blogging, finding the right site, getting them to agree to take your post, structuring your post and the byline so you get the traffic back to your site. So I'll be covering that on another day. But for now, the straightforward answer is yes. Guest blogging is absolutely worthwhile, especially in that middle phase when your main goal is to get more traffic to your site. Now, The second question is from Eric who asks, much has been said about utilizing content marketing to drive inbound traffic or better yet leads. However, with our current economic climate, creating rich and useful content becomes an increasingly difficult task. Can you make any recommendations of how a small firm with limited time and budget can utilize content marketing to generate leads? Is there a way to do content marketing on a tight budget. Okay, so that's a big question. Um, in my experience, even for smaller firms, budget shouldn't really be the issue. Content marketing, especially if you do it online, is one of the cheapest forms of marketing. You don't necessarily have to pay someone to create the content for you, and in that case it's worth thinking about bringing that capability in-house, as it's such a critical competence. But what is often an issue is time. Being able to produce a regular output of high quality content with limited resources in the small amount of time we all have available. So here are a bunch of tips. The first is that you know, while practice might not make perfect, it does make productive. The more you write, the faster and the better you get at it. If you haven't done much writing since school, it can take you ages to crank out that first article. But by number 10, you end up writing much better stuff in about half the time. So keep at it. You can also reuse material. You know, an article could be the basis for a presentation, a podcast, a video. You can take a keynote speech you've done or some training material and split it into half a dozen articles. So make sure you get the most out of everything you do by reusing it. And you can also pick a media that doesn't take so much time. Writing's quite quick. Recording an interview is incredibly quick. You just get someone to ask you a bunch of questions and you answer with the recorder running and you're done. Now, video's higher impact but it takes much longer, it takes more post-processing to get it to look right as well. Now you can also speed up content creation by using a formula. So rather than starting from scratch with a blank sheet of paper every time, you can write in a predetermined structure. 
So you can do a list post, a list of tips or ideas, or you can do an interview, or you can argue the case against the prevailing wisdom, or you can do a case study. Or like this video, you can do Q&A. So if you use a format like that, it makes it quicker and easier to produce content. And the other key strategy is to focus on quality, not quantity. There's this myth that you have to do a blog post three times a week or every day in order to build up a following, and it's just not true. I post once a week, and if you look at someone like Derek Halpern over at socialtriggers.com, he posts about twice a month at most. But when he does post, it's absolute quality. And that's what gets visitors and builds a reputation. Now, in terms of promoting your content, the best way to do it, to do it on a budget is what we talked about before, guest blog posting. It costs nothing financially, and it can have a big impact. My friend Danny Inney went from less than 2,000 visitors a month to well over 20,000 a month in about a year. And he did it all with guest blog posting. He didn't do any SEO or promotion outside of guest blogging. Now, it takes work to do that. He did 80 guest posts in a year, so it goes back to that productivity side. But there were no big investments needed. So it's perfect for small businesses with small budgets. So that's it for today. If you're not doing content marketing, there is no better online strategy. And I'll see you tomorrow for more lead generation Q&A. Cheers.